New Astronomers, Michael here, and today I'm going to introduce new astronomers to the equatorial mount. As seen in my previous video, my first telescope was mounted on what's called an altazimuth mount. When I bought my second telescope, it was mounted on what's called an equatorial mount. And as expected, my first night of viewing was filled with frustration because I was struggling on how to use the telescope. So I'm hoping that this video would help new astronomers how to use their new equatorial mount. If you've used both, you probably know the difference between these two types of mounts. The altazimuth mount is the same type of mount more commonly used as camera tripods. Uh, this makes it more intuitive because it seems like the camera can, can slew in almost any direction. It doesn't reorient the telescope and also it requires balancing in only one axis. Compared to an equatorial mount, it seems a little bit more counterintuitive. It seems to only want to move in one axis at a time. Uh, also, it can reorient the telescope in some awkward positions, as well as the balancing aspect, you need to balance it in both axes. Having said all that, why would anybody want to recommend using an equatorial mount? Well, in fact, it's actually for the same reasons that I had mentioned earlier. The restrictions of an equatorial mount actually is an advantage when you're tracking an object. Equatorial mounted uh, telescopes allow you to track objects a lot more easier because it'll only require you to make adjustments in one axis, which is the right ascension. Uh, compared to an altazimuth mount, you would need to adjust both the vertical and the horizontal axis. It just makes it a lot more enjoyable. Uh, it keeps the uh, object within the field of view longer, so you'll have more time uh, observing than adjusting. The second advantage is that it'll stay in the same, it'll keep the object in the field of view at the same orientation. Uh, because uh, without reorienting your telescope, uh, you'll start to uh, observe image rotation. And that is a dis disadvantage when you're doing astrophotography. What I mean by image rotation is as an object in the sky, or for example, a constellation rises from the horizon, it might appear sideways. As it moves higher into the sky, it'll start to become more upright. And in long exposures, this will result in blurring. So I'm going to try to explain this in as simple terms as possible. I'm going to simulate what it would look like if I were to operate my telescope um, out in the field using this software called Stellarium. This is a planetarium software that you can download for free off the internet. I'm going to start off by facing south. And uh, my location is in the Northern Hemisphere near Toronto, Ontario. I'm going to turn on the azimuthal grid lines. Now these are the grid lines that you use uh, as a coordinate system if you were using an altazimuth mount. If you were to take your altazimuth mount and pointed it straight up overhead, the highest point would be located around here. This point is called the zenith. This is where the vertical axis of the mount is pointed at. Now, observe what happens if I were using an equatorial mount. The grid line system that it uses is called an equatorial grid. If I were to turn that on, you'll notice that the zenith is not there. In fact, the zenith where it used to be is located, from my location, it's located near Polaris and it's right there. So what this really means is that an equatorial mount is an altazimuth mount where its vertical axis is pointed at the celestial pole. So what is the purpose of using an equatorial grid? Well the advantage of this is that if you were to imagine a celestial sphere around the earth, uh, you would notice that the objects will appear to revolve around the celestial pole. I'll show you how that works if I were to fast forward this. You see that? The grid lines that are radiating from Polaris are what's called the right ascension lines. It takes 24 hours for one of these lines to make a full revolution. Therefore, right, a right ascension unit of measure from this point to this point is one hour of right ascension. Now the advantage of using an equatorial mount is that if you were to, for example, have Vega in your field of view, 
you'll notice that Vega will start to drift a little bit. But all you need to do in an equatorial mount is just to turn the right ascension knob and Vega will go right back into your field of view. I'm going to do another example. Now I'm facing southeast and I've got Arcturus and Mars. So remember, it doesn't matter um, which direction you're facing, your telescope will continue to follow the same motions in declination and right ascension. So if let's say in your field of view you had uh, you had Arcturus and you wanted to point it at Mars. So what I would do is first I would make uh, around a one hour right ascension this way and about uh, what is this 10 20 about 20 degrees of declination to the south. Most equatorial mounts will come with what's called slow motion knobs. These allow you to make the fine adjustments so that you can track the objects quite easily. One area of confusion is determining which motion is right ascension and which motion is declination. One way to determine that is as soon as you have your mount polar aligned, you should see Polaris in your eyepiece. Now push your telescope over to the side in this motion and as you look through your eyepiece you should see Polaris relatively close within your field of view because this motion is right ascension and it tends to draw circles around Polaris. Now when you move your telescope this way Polaris will begin to move out of your field of view because this motion is the declination motion as it tries to move towards the South Pole. Now moving on to your slow motion knobs, you can do the same thing. Turn one knob and if Polaris begins to move away from the field of view rapidly, this would be your declination knob. Get a sticker and stick it onto that knob. Now your other slow motion knob is most likely going to be your right ascension knob. Get a sticker and stick it on there. One of the advantages of having an equatorial mount is that some models will allow you to install a right ascension motor drive such as this one here. Now those that support it will have a large cog opposite of the right ascension slow motion knob. And how you install it is uh, there should be a mount like this one here and as you mount it the small cog on the motor will line up with the larger cog on the mount and when you turn it on it should turn your uh, telescope in the right ascension direction at the same speed as the Earth's rotation and what that does is that it'll keep the object within your field of view for a longer time without making manual adjustments. There's still going to be a few challenges to using uh, your telescope on an equatorial mount such as getting disoriented. For example if you're using a finder scope that is image corrected you look through the eyepiece, the objects seem to move in the correct direction, but when you look through your telescope's eyepiece, they seem to be moving in the opposite direction. Fortunately, the only way to solve this is to keep using your telescope. So go out there in the field, have a lot of fun, keep practicing, and next thing you know, muscle memory will kick in and it'll become second nature to you. So hope you've enjoyed this video on the basics of using an equatorial mount. Thank you.